welcome along and welcome back to Six Ashes. Today we are still on early winter and that is because I've discovered with our pile of canola down here that it's actually time to sell it. If we have a look at the graph here for our economy and have a look at the canola, we're at our peak of selling today at 1300 Best price at the moment is actually uh, 1273 So it's a slightly below the best price, but we definitely want to get this sold today. But we're not going to use this truck. We used this truck last time. It is up to 0.8 hours. So we're going to return that now and just use our truck and trailer. Uh, so man truck return. Yes and trailer return that as well so those two are returned and then once we've got this job done today and completed this we're going to use our 7840 for this we're going to be able to move on to the next day and start getting some work done there as well so we'll just pull this up under our conveyor belt and then we can get this filling up here so turn it on and yep, we are taking the canola, which is good. And I've decided how this yard is going to go. Now, this shed we built so recently, we're actually going to demolish and remove. It's very, very tight through here. The big thing I'm going to do, though, is we're going to put in at the back here a grain store. And that will mean we can turn the rest of this into a yard rather nicely and put some extra buildings and things in. So we've got we've got a plan coming together on how the actual yard is going to work. This is filling this up rather well. And there we go. Right, how much do we have? 11,091 liters, perfect. Let's get this down to the best selling point we've got for canola, which is the Seven Valley Stores. Now that is the one that is right down the bottom corner of the map so we'll take this off and we'll go and get this sold this is a fairly long trek up to this sell point but it should be worth it this is going to throw us over a hundred thousand having only sold half of our crops this year admittedly we sold our biggest crop that being the carrots and i was looking at this between last video and this one and just thinking how much we we probably want to lean into the carrots on this farm. Every year they give us a massive boost in money. Whereas our other crops, like our canola here, only gives us uh, about 10,000. We made 60,000 off the carrots. It's a huge, huge amount we make off those. Here we are up to 100,000. There we go, just passing it. How much is the canola going to give us? 14,000 for 11,000 litres of canola. Absolutely brilliant. So we want to get this back down to our farm. We're going to move on to the next game day and then we'll have a look at what we want to do. The light is fading now, so we want to get this parked up and out the way so that we can move through the night. We have got a load of silage bales that we sold at the BGA. We need to keep an eye on how much those give us overnight. Could be a really good windfall. The two things we have that make us the most money on here are the carrots and the BGA. So we're expecting a nice little income from just that small field worth of silage bales that we had last time so let's turn off the lights All right so uh, my plan originally was to use this shed as a workshop unfortunately you can't put placeables on here so let's grab workshops and tools i've got some mini workshop bits here that we're going to use and my plan was to place it on the inside here but because of this building's base we're not actually able to place anything in it we can do it in this barn here but it's it kind of makes this barn useless to us so we're going to look at what we can do in so far as replacing this and maybe putting a smaller workshop somewhere on here that we can do better there with i have also just realized we have a load of alfalfa we cut a while ago that could do with tedding and baling so we may do that first though we're going to move on to the next game day
9 a.m. and the sun has finally come up. And we're now going to go and head over to the BGA area. We've got a field full of alfalfa up there that we cut a while ago that needs tedding, rowing, and baling. So we we'll use our 6810 for this. We've actually got the tedder down here, I think. It's one of the few implements that we actually brought back down here. I want to try and get my other equipment back down here. But this bit is just here. There we go. Hook that up. Thankfully, in seasons, the alfalfa doesn't actually take more than just tedding it to sort. So we should be able to get this all done. The reason why we still have some alfalfa, actually, is because it's not affected by the rotting in seasons. So let's head up there, get this tethered, and get this cleaned up. So down to the BGA and around the back here. And I think this field of alfalfa next year, I'm going to look to replace it with the horse grass. The idea being that this is a tiny little field we can do very little with. We need somewhere where we can do uh, our horse grass uh, to create the haylage for our horses. Oh, wow. This little tractor should be more than capable of this. What is going on here? Let me just double check this. If we have a look in our garage... The requirement for this is 30 horsepower. This is not an issue we've had before with this. I wonder why. Grabbed the 7840 and brought it down here because the little 6810 seems completely unable to handle this tether. This tether is only a 30 horsepower tether though. We had the uh, 5000 series Ford running on that. So what I need to do is find out what is going on here. Now, this tractor should more than be able to handle this. This is a 100 horsepower tractor. It is a long, long way from having an issue with this. Well, 68 Den shouldn't have an issue with this. That's a, that's a 90 horsepower tractor. So, yeah. Start it up, put it down. And yeah, no issues whatsoever. So I don't know what's happening with that little tractor. Uh, even even if it was a, a misconfiguration issue with the mod, then it shouldn't be a problem. The the lowest tractor that's there is a 60 horsepower one, which is twice the horsepower needed for that to work. I don't know what's going on. If you have any ideas, uh, please make, let me know in the comments. I need to have a play around with our 6810 because if it can't do the simple grass jobs like this, that's rather worrying. Between the various bits we've already sold this year and a little bit of a boost from this field and the crops we still have to sell, we should do really well. Uh, we're going to be... Well, we already are doing really well. We are at 100, 150,000 going into winter. It is uh, exceptionally good. And we get better and better with this every year. I am going to look at re-jigging the fields next year. I think that field... Uh, field 13 here, as I was saying earlier, horse grass would be a great way to go with it. Uh, I'm thinking field 12, with the fact that it is in, almost entirely loam, would be a great field to put some crops in. And, uh, yeah, we need to kind of work out where a good grass field to replace it would be. And I'm kind of coming back to field 17. Field 17 being the nearest field to our farm is just all sandy loam and we saw last year what effect that has on our overall yield uh we're gonna go and take this and go and get ourselves a wind rower see if this has the same effect uh but i think we can do before we take this off i have had a look at maybe adding onions into our mix into the basically doing two fields of oats to make up for the loss in yield and then, uh, yeah, that should hopefully work fairly well for us. Adding an extra field in, in the form of field 12. So I'm going to have a look at it. I'm going to see how it does and see if we can 
possibly fit it in and how well it works. The other advantage is onions and carrots take the same harvester, just with a different header. Our pudding at Winrow is here, so let's hook it up. And this is where we get to the point where we're moving equipment from this shed up here down to the bottom one. And getting that there, like so. Now, can we handle this with this tractor? We should be able to. This is a 50 horsepower, uh, this top 612C. So, yeah, absolutely this tractor should be able to handle this. Uh, let's get it back down to the alfalfa and see if it actually will. So back down here and around we come. Let's open this up. We are all hooked up. With any luck, this is going to work. And it'll just be that little class one that it doesn't work with. Right, down. Yeah, whatever it is, it's that little class wind rower. Uh, does not seem to want to work with this little 6810. I think that's a problem in the class wind rower then. But that's just weird, really weird that that has that issue. Uh, but we can get this little tractor now, rowing this up. And then we'll be able to go and grab our baler and get this whole field done. So as I'm going across this field, I suddenly thought, I'm getting different colors of alfalfa in here. And now I know why. This is alfalfa semi-dry, this is alfalfa hay. We need to tent this again. So let's lift this up, turn this off, and we'll see if we can give this a second tent and get the rest of this off here. We know we can't tent this with this tractor, so we will have to get the 7840 doing it again. Now, is this all turning to dry? Yes, it is. Perfect. So we should be able to get this dried out and rowed up again any minute. So that's got our field tethered for the second time today. And you can now see that we have a much, much lighter color to all of the alfalfa on here. This is now dried to hay, uh, which is exactly what we want. The alfalfa hay sells quite well, I think, if I remember correctly. So we'll leave this here, turn it off. And yeah, I still don't know what it is that's causing that little tether to work so horribly on this 6810. But we can unfold this now and a little bit of deja vu, get this bit here going as well. This windrow, of course, is from the Alpine expansion. And uh, it has served me really well on lots of maps now. Uh, I, I absolutely love this little, uh, this little windrower. Uh, it's not massively wide, but it is wide enough to make swift work of most jobs, uh, which is just really, really good news. And so so nimble as well we are well into the afternoon and we still need to get a baler on this so let's stop this fold it up and pull this back out and out of the way uh, and i'm going to take this back down to our main shed in fact i think what we might do is get these two tractors going in tandem uh, with follow me and that way we can get this stuff back down to our main shed and pick up the baler and come back up here. I think the baler should be all right on this tractor, but we will find out very soon. Back with our Ford baler as the sun is beginning to set. Let's turn it on, drop it down. And yeah, look at this. Again, this 6810 is having problems with something it really, really shouldn't. But this 
This is not a problem that the previous version of this tractor had. It was, uh, it had no issues with this whatsoever. So once again, I got the 7840 down here. Let's hook this up, see if this does any better. Uh, I think it will. Should blast through this fairly quickly. I'm going to turn all the lights on as the sun is now fading fast. But we want to get this finished. There we go. Starter up. And away we go. And yep, yeah, we're creating some alfalfa hay fairly swiftly now. I don't think we're going to get more than two or three bales off here, though. Looks like we're going to get about four bales off this field. In fact, it's going to be almost exactly four bales. Uh, I don't think there's enough alfalfa in here to finish this one. Uh, but those should be fairly easy for us to come and pick up next time with the bale trailer. We should be able to clear that up fairly easily. Yeah, it's another 32% of a bale there. And that has cleared it all out. So there we go. Don't know what is happening with our little Ford 6810. Uh, it is very very weird how that is handling at the moment uh but yeah i'd say that's a fairly successful clear up we've had today uh, it's got dark here on six ashes so we're going to be picking up with our next winter one in a few days time for now though all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video please give it a like drop us a comment and give it a share and for all the latest videos from Virtual Farmer, please subscribe to the channel, ring that bell, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.